نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرخ لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احل العقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشدا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظُ اللَّهِ The wives are like what? Righteous women. Righteous women who are devoutly obedient, guarding in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. So from here onwards now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be explaining the duties of the Muslim wife and the characteristics of the Muslim wife. Now, before I start the discussion, the first thing which I would want all of us, all of the Muslim wives and all the Muslim women to realize very clearly and except from the core of our hearts is that the foremost claim on the wife is of her husband. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates in a sahih hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said the greatest claim on a woman is of her husband and the greatest claim on a man is of his mother. So this is the balance which Allah has taught the husband and the wife, the man and the woman in their normal practical day-to-day -day life. And the right of the husband for the woman, that after a woman gets married, then after Allah, the first right on a Muslim woman is of her husband. Hazrat Abu Huraira رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ reports a hadith in Tirmizi in which the Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said a few words which makes this concept very clear. Prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said, If I were to order anyone to prostrate himself before another, I would order a woman to prostrate herself before her husband. So this is it. The right of the husband comes after the right of Allah for a Muslim woman. And there is another similar hadith, Sahih hadith. Uh, the narrator narrates that a uh, companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Ma'az bin Jabal, he had uh, been to Syria and uh, when he returned, he prostrated himself before the Messenger of Allah. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked in amazement, Ma'aza ya Ma'az? What is this Maaz? Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing all this? Then uh, Hazrat Maaz, Rasi Allah Ta'ala, and who he explained that he has been to Syria and he saw people, they were prostrating prostrat uh, themselves before their religious leaders and their priests and their chiefs. So to uh, show his respect and regard to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he thought that he, he, he might as well do the same. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not do that. So, prostrating of a man in front of any human being is not permissible and it is strictly prohibited in Islam. Prophet said, do not do that. And then he added, if I were asked to, if I were, if I were to ask anyone to prostrate himself before another, besides Allah, I would have asked women to prostrate themselves before their husbands. So, as far as the order of preference is concerned for the Muslim women, the first obedience and the first right is of Allah and then of obedience of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then the obedience and the right of her husband. So now the first characteristic which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala <coughs> 
the first characteristic which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran for a good Muslim wife is what? Faswalihatu. The righteous women, the pious women, the virtuous women. So being righteous, pious and virtuous is the first thing which is important why we are making selection of a wife. A man is selecting a wife for himself or a mother is looking for a wife for the son or a sister is trying to find a wife for his brother. So the first priority and the primary preference has to be her being a swaliha, a righteous Muslim woman. Prophet Sallallahu said, the whole world is a valuable position and the best position of the world is a righteous wife. Allah, make us one of them. Allah, make our daughters and make our daughter-in-laws and make our granddaughters be one of these righteous Muslim wives. The Prophet ﷺ said, A righteous or a virtuous wife is the pillar of her husband's faith. So she determines, she strengthens, she supports and she protects and she helps her husband in his faith, in his religion, in his Islam and in his honor. That is why Prophet ﷺ in a Sahih Hadith reported in Bukhari has guided the Muslim men to set the merits for choosing a wife. Prophet ﷺ said, you marry a woman for three reasons. That is the choice when you make for a wife is you look for these three merits for her beauty, for her wealth and for her religion. O oh, believers, be successful, marry women for the sake of their religion. So this is the preference or the priority of religion, of being righteous and of being virtuous that Prophet ﷺ has advised. Similarly, Prophet ﷺ has warned and he said in a Sahih Hadith, do not marry women just for the sake of her beauty. It is very much possible that her beauty might lead her to destruction. Do not marry a woman just for the sake of her wealth. It is very much possible that her wealth might take her towards a loss. You may be successful. You marry women for the sake of their religion. And a very comprehensive advice in the words of the Prophet wasallam, is that when you are proposed by a person with whose mannerism and whose religion that is whose faith and belief and whose religion you are content. That is you are satisfied that his mannerisms are good and he's good in his faith and he has perfected his belief and you are content with it. Then accept the proposal. So the first merit of a Muslim wife, which is mentioned here is Swalihatu. The second is the next two are then going to be the duties of a Muslim wife. The first being Qanitatun and the second being Hafizatun. So what do we mean by Qanitatun? Qanitatun means very intensely obedient. Qaf, Noon, Ta means obedience and Qanitat we mean the obedient women. Obedient to whom? Obviously, by the order of preference, obedient first of all to Allah, obedient then to the Prophet wasallam, and last but not the least, obedient Qanitat, obedient to her husband. Obviously, within the limits of Quran and Hadith, she stays obedient. Now, to open our hearts and to make it very clear and to make us accept the importance of our duty of being obedient to the husband and to make us realize the rewards an obedient wife 
has been promised in Quran and Hadith. I'm going to I'm going to quote quite a few Hadith so that we get very clear headed about it, and we also get tempted by the rewards promised by Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Nasai and Hazrat Abdullah bin Salam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu also reports in a Sahih Hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your best wives that is the best wives are what your best wives are those when you look at them you feel pleasure when you order them they obey you and they look after or they protect your honor your wealth and your secrets when you're not around so this is the quality and the duty of the best wife and i again repeat that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly said that if i had to allow anybody to prostrate anyone other than allah i would have asked the women to prostrate in front of their husbands in a hadith reported by hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in fact it is a huge promise it is a huge promise by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if a woman offers now go on making your countdown and go on putting your scores if a woman offers the five daily prayers keeps the fasts of ramazan got the score of 2 so far so good five daily prayers keep the fasts of ramazan guards her honor and fourth obeys her husband then she can enter heaven by whatever door out of the eight doors of heaven she would desire that is a woman who does all these four things fasting offering salah and guiding her honor and obeying her husband she will have the super bumper offer that oh you muslim woman you can enter out of whichever door of the paradise you want to allah subhanahu wa taala make us one of them then hazrat umm salma radhiyallahu ta'ala anha reports in tirmizi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised and said that a wife who, who passes away in a state that her husband was pleased with her she will enter the paradise rabb ibni li indaka baitan fil jannah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has in another hadith mentioned in some other words he said that you cannot enter paradise until allah is pleased and allah will be pleased if the husband is pleased so the player of allah is the player of the husband and the anger of the husband is the anger of allah i would want to clarify that for a version for an unmarried girl the first right after allah is of her father like we we heard in surah baqara that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said raza allah bi raza alwalid sukht allah bi sukht alwalid so the first right is the right of the father but after the woman gets married after allah the first right is of her husband so if the husband is pleased allah is pleased and if the husband is displeased and happy allah is displeased and unhappy similarly prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed all women and said all of those who are desirous of entering the paradise should obey allah all of those who are desirous of entering the paradise should obey allah but you cannot obey allah until you obey your husbands to the extent that if the husband asks you or orders you to run between those two red mountains she should do so 
The Prophet ﷺ was, was sitting in an open ground and there were two red mountains and he pointed towards them and he said that if the husband says something which seems which seems so illogical and so irrational, that why must I run? Why should I run? Why do I have to run? But if the husband says, instructs and orders the wife to run between those two mountains and seems very irrational and illogical and unpractical and pointless and useless, but if the husband is ordering, there's not to question why, there's but to do and die. That is exactly how a wife is supposed to obey her husband. Obviously, obviously, if she can physically run between the two mountains, if she if she has an arthritis, if he has certain issues, obviously then she would not be expected to do so. And uh, then obedience to Allah, obedience to the husband is so very important that taking his permission to go out of the house, the Prophet in a Sahih Hadith says that when a woman leaves her house without the consent or the permission of her husband, then an angel on the heaven curses her and all the things she passes by curse her till she returns back. So the curse of the angel and curse of all the lively things from which she passes or which she comes across so the curse of it is making what? It is a major sin to leave your house without the permission or without the consult, consent or the agreement of the husband. And I would want to clarify that women generally know Women generally know where her husband would allow us to go and we do not need to ask for his permission for every trivial issue and every small thing because we automatically understand that obviously he is not going to stop us from going to the market. He might not be stopping us to go to uh, fetch the child from the school or he might not be uh, stopping us from many things. But the wives clearly know and in hearts of hearts we do know and realize that this is a place I'm not sure I'm not clear that he might or he might not but the moment when you are not sure and the and the thing which you're not clear headed and in heart of heart he know you know that he won't be liking it then for that specific place or that specific situation or get together you need to seek his permission and on the contrary and on the contrary, a woman who obeys the husband, just look at look at what she's going to get in the worldly, in the worldly life. The Prophet ﷺ promises that a wife who obeys and serves her husband, supplicating will be for her. That is, who will be supplicating for her? All the birds of the skies, the beasts in the jungle, the fish in the depths of the oceans and the angels in the heaven as long as she is obeying and serving her husband. So this is the merit and this is the huge reward which is being promised to an obedient wife. The Prophet wasallam, in some other words said, the best women, Allah make us one of them, Allah make our daughters and daughters-in-laws and our granddaughters and the girls of our offsprings make us make all of them one of them. The best women amongst my followers are those who serve and obey their husbands in all matters except the disobedience of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Such a lady Prophet ﷺ promised such a lady will be rewarded in one day and one night. The reward like a martyr in the path of Allah. Subhanallah. 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 Then the Prophet ﷺ informed all the Muslim wives in a Sahih Hadith, A wife is the closest to Allah when she is serving attending and obeying her husband. So there we are. And that is what we need to learn. And that is what we need to understand. And that is what we need to adopt. Then in another, another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, he warned, he actually clearly warns Three people whose salah will not raise beyond their heads, that is their salah will just not be accepted. 
it will not be raised towards the heaven to be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will not be raised be above their heads to be to be recorded in the illiyin three people whose salah will not be raised beyond their heads number one the slave who escapes from his master until he returns a person who is intoxicated until that is he drank and he was drunk until he regains his consciousness and the third is a wife whose husband a wife whose husband commanded her a righteous act and she refused and he's angry with her so a wife with whom her husband is angry or annoyed due to a right cause until he makes up so if the husband is annoyed allah is annoyed if the husband is displeased allah is displeased if husband is unhappy allah is unhappy if we are disobedient to the husband we are disobedient to allah and if we are obedient to the husband we are obedient to allah and if we and if we pass off in this state of obedience and service to the husband we shall inshallah according to the promises of hadith enter by whichever door of the paradise we would want allahumma ja'alna minhum so now coming to the third point hafizatul lil ghaib bima hafiz allah the wives are those who who are guarding the husbands in the husband's absence what allah would have them guard hafizat are those who are doing what hafazat hafaza protect guard they protect or guard what his valuable his precious his dear his near belongings when in his absence when he's not around so what would need to be protected by the wife what would she need to guide his honor and her own honor his bed his secrets his money his wealth the environment of his house his children and last but not the least his dear old sick weak parents his mother his beloved father looking after and caring for his parents is what swalihat qanitat hafizat is expected to do it is her duty she is duty bound i i today hear of so many religious scholars talking and saying and dividing parents and very clearly announcing that his parents are for him to look after and her parents are for her to look after now subhanallah how do we deprive and how do we misguide what sort of a swaliha what sort of a qanita what sort of a hafiza wife is she going to be how can she be a righteous woman how can she be an obedient obedient person of the allah and obedient wife of the husband and how can she be a guarding wife of the husband if she is not looking after these muhsinin these nearest and dearest relations of her husband obviously if she is a saliha she is a righteous pious virtuous woman she's she's not expected to do that and all husbands all husbands of qanitat are obviously expecting and obviously guiding and obviously instructing the wives to look after their parents and this no doubt is the dearest and the nearest and the most valuable belonging of the husband which he is leaving behind in the house and then why why does he have to leave them behind obviously obviously to be able to go out to earn to earn for whom to earn for her to be able to provide for her to be able to feed her to be able to clothe her to be able to fend and fetch for her children and the family so if he is having to go out and leave his sick parents his dear mother 
his beloved father in the house dependent on her then being a saliha being a qanita being a hafiza she is duty bound it is her duty it is not only her duty it is her privilege it is a blessing it is a rahma and do do we divide rahma parents how can we divide them allah has been so so very kind that if before marriage if before marriage we just had two gates to paradise two fields two souls under way under where we had our paradise after marriage they will multiply to four who is going to divide your rahma how can we say for you are your parents and for me are my parents and how can we say and how can we instruct the muslim women that you are not supposed and you are not duty bound to look after your parents not duty bound to look after his parents and your mother in law and your father in law allah subhanahu taala allah subhanahu taala make us one of those make us make us one of those wives who accept who realize and who are dutiful rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata ayun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama oh allah make our husbands and our children the coolness of our eyes and make us the leaders of the god fearing make us the imam of the muttaqin rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim fi amanillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh